Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shereen. I'm an interior designer here in New York City and in this episode we are going to talk about how to get your place ready for fall. But it's not exactly what you think. This is the minimalist way. This is not a shopping haul video by any means. And welcome back to my channel. My name is Shereen. I'm an interior designer here in New York and in today's episode we are going to be talking about how to transition your home over to fall. But this is not some sort of shopping haul even though I'm wearing like a fancy hat. This is not a shopping haul by any means. I am more of a minimalist and I embrace that with less is more. And so this is hopefully helping you transform the things that you already have. So let's start. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Shireen. Like I said, I'm an interior designer. You can find me on Instagram at Green Shireen. I would love to have you over there as well. Over here, I talk about all things interiors, uh, commercial, residential, either of the few, mixing the rules so that you can understand how to make your home feel more like those places that you go to when you're traveling and on vacation, and especially now that we can't go to as many places as we used to go to. I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to get your place ready for fall. So here come 10 tips. 10. It's a whole lot. You know what? Let's make it 11. I'm going to give you one for free. Here's how I'm going to give you the free tip though. I would like you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Please click the like button below, push the bell, subscribe. Come on! No, I'm kidding. The reason is... I want to make sure that I can get you as much content as possible. I deliver videos every Thursday and I would love to have you here. If you comment and tell me more of what you want to hear, what you want to see, what you want to discuss, I have more ideas to go over different content with you and make sure that it's relevant to exactly what you are interested in hearing. All right, so let's get started. Number one, the first thing is air filters. I have this air filtration system called the Lavoie. People ask me all the time which air purifier I recommend. Uh, this is definitely the one by far. Usually when you're getting these kind of clunky tools, it's very difficult to get one that looks aesthetically pleasing. I like to hide this one behind a mirror in one of my windowsills that's usually shut, but I keep it over by my kitchen only because I don't have great ventilation over there. So as I'm thinking about transitioning my home over into fall, this is the time when I would purchase new air filters and put it into my filter. That way I make sure I'm doing it at least once a year. You should really do it probably twice a year, but um, I'm not gonna sit here and let you judge me because when's the last time you changed yours? Right, okay. Tip number two. The second tip is about sheets. I don't know if you know the difference, but there are like hundreds of different types of sheets you can purchase. You can purchase percale sheets, you can purchase cotton sheets, you can purchase sateen sheets, you can purchase flannel, linen, microfiber, like what in the world, tensile, modal, there's all these different fabrics. And in design, we spend a lot of time talking about fabrics and what they do and how they breathe and how they move. And that's the difference between all of these. As I said, this is not a shopping haul video, so I'm not gonna go in depth with all of them. I will say this, during the summertime, I go for percale sheets. They are thinner and really, really crisp and breathable. And during the winter time, I'll go for a warmer sheet, perhaps a sateen, because that just keeps you a little bit cozier. So from a sheets perspective, I do abide by the rule of having three sheets for your bed, one in the wash, one in the cupboard, and one on the bed. So you'd have three sets of sheets. I usually do two that are more of an all season, and then one that is a heavier sheet. So I would do maybe two versions of percale, or maybe a percale in a linen, which is also really breathable, is really great in the summer, and then have a sateen uh, that's available as my third sheet for the particular bed. I keep three for each bed, and then I keep one for any guest beds or air mattresses and things like that. Guest sheets are separate from like home sheets. You know, you know, you know. In addition to sheets, the next thing is throws. I love throws. It's one of the ways that you can make a space cozy and warm, but the throw that you use all year that might be like a wide knit is not the throw that you would want to use in the winter when it gets colder. Some people like the heated blankets that you can plug them in. I, mm, not my jam, but definitely go for a thicker blanket or a thicker throw in the winter, like a chenille blanket. If you're not one to have a throw on your sofa 
all year round, this is the time to throw something on your sofa. Um, a faux fur is really nice if you're looking for something a bit warmer. It's just nice to have that for your guests if and when they come over. It's nice for you when you're sitting there and you wanna curl up and watch some TV or something. This is the jam, get yourself a proper throw or move your throws around so that you have your warm weather throws on your sofa. For me, I am eyeing a particular one. Oh, I said this wasn't a haul video, but I am looking at an Hermes Avalon blanket that is on my checklist of things to do. So that will happen at some point and that will be our winter throw. It's a cashmere blend. And um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about a blanket. Let's move on. If you're doing some sort of redesign right now in your bath, it's a great time to consider heated floors. No, I'm not being funny. If you live in a cold climate, you're probably really annoyed by several things. Like when you come out of the bath, the tile is really cold. If you're doing a remodel, just look at the cost, ask your designer, ask your builder, and then weigh it one way or the other. Uh, towel warmers are really nice, but I'm not gonna tell you to go out and buy a towel warmer. I'm just going to suggest that if you want to do some things to tweak the space for fall, here are some ideas, as opposed to just running to the store and buying some fall scented candles, although you could do that too. Number five is your curtains. We didn't talk about the curtains. So curtains are something else that I change over as the seasons transition. I'll go from a sheer light style curtain that's probably a cotton. I'm not a huge fan of the polyester blends, but I do like things that are machine washable so that I can easily take care of them if my daughter puts her fingers on them with something sticky or grimy or what have you. And I would transition in the fall to a thicker, heavier, either silk or a velour. I really love nice, thick uh, velvet curtains, which is what I have up right now as I'm transitioning over into fall. I think that those are fantastic. Maybe you did a blackout in the summertime because it was too much sun coming in and you would switch to something that's not a blackout. Um, perhaps you'd switch to something that's lined. This is all things that'll help bring your electricity down because depending on whether or not a lot of cold air is penetrating your windows, lined curtains will help to keep some of that air out and retain some of your heat inside. So curtains is a great tip for number five, shoes. Well, you wanna get your boots out and putting them out on display and switch out some of those lighter sandals and shoes that you're wearing. But what does an interior designer have to do with all of this? Well, let's talk storage because if you have organized your home and redid your closet and even purged and pared down and all these things, and now you have to bring out these big boots, where do they go? Remember in my declutter video, I talked about when you have something in your house, you need to think about where it lives all the time, how it comes in, where it lives, when it leaves. This is the where it lives part. If you missed the declutter video, you can check it out in the link up here. It was a good one. But where do the boots live when you take them from under your bed or outside of whatever storage they're in and put them now in their new space where you need to access them all the time? So this is the consideration for transitioning to fall. Where are the boots gonna go? And do you have holders for the boots or stands to put them up? I really like those plastic stands that go inside of the boot in order to keep the shape of the boot and help them stand up. I really think that that's just a cleaner look when they're lined up really nicely as opposed to slouched and hung over. And I really do like over the knee boots and I like up to the knee boots. And So anyway, I digress. But I would suggest that you get uh, a proper storage for your boots when you move them out. This is actually the fun transition because with fall, you're bringing the heavy stuff out and putting it in the closet, but your lighter things like your tank tops and softer pieces, you know, silk blouses and things like that that you can bring over the summer, that's the stuff that you're gonna store and you need less space to store all of that because it's just, they're smaller, thinner materials. The hard part is when you're transitioning and bringing your heavy sweaters and putting those away. And what I would recommend for that is your vacuum seal bags. I was not a fan of these before. I'm not a big plastic girl, you know that but these vacuum seal bags make all the difference if you're living in a small space and you're trying to figure out storage for compressing those sweaters and putting them away, taking them out and having them feeling really fresh. And just as a side note, you wanna keep a mothball in there. I like to do the little cedar balls. I put one in each of those bags just before I seal them and put them away, just to keep my things fresh. And then six is your coats. So where do those go? How are they hung? Are you bringing out your heavier ones? Do you have a coat closet? If you don't have a coat closet, where are your coats going to be on a regular basis? How many of them do you want readily accessible? And what does your space look like? If you don't think through these things, this is what's gonna clutter up your entryway right away. Where you can reference my entryway makeover to see how we utilize coat hooks 
over in that area we live in a small space and so I made sure that I had some coat hooks that actually go away and then can come down one thing I want to mention about that you can check out the video over here but one thing I want to mention about those coat hooks is you need to mount those with drywall anchors please don't try to mount that without a proper anchor those anchors go inside the wall and open up like a butterfly and that way it hooks and ensures that you can't pull it back off of the wall your coats are going to be heavy the things that are in your coat pockets are probably going to be heavy and you're going to hang multiples of them on there so you want to make sure that you have that coat hooks secure in the walls so that you don't run into any issues of having it come out. All right, for this next one, we're gonna go to the kitchen and talk about appliances. So let's go do that. In the kitchen, I'm generally a one trick pony where I only have one thing on my countertop. I find that having too many things on my countertop is just way too cluttered, so I prefer to just keep one item. But as we transition over into fall, is this the item that I'm gonna use the most? Maybe, maybe not. The thing that I might use the most going into fall is probably my crock pot. And so I would want to reach and pull that down from this cabinet over here to make sure that I have my availability for all of these sautés and simmering and soups that I'm going to be doing. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this Breville. The benefit of it during the summer is I can heat things up, bake, reheat, etc. without turning on the big oven, which meant that it was keeping my place cooler during the summer as a result. But in the winter, fall months, it's really nice to bake in your big oven because you're cheating and heating up your place at the same time. But because I only keep one thing on the counter, I also have some additional space to add the crock pot very easily and still to be able to do all the other things that we need to do in the kitchen. One of the other kitchen appliances, which is a kitchen bonus, was our grill slash griddle. We used to have this flat grill and griddle that you can flip over to get your grill lines on one side and then it was flat and you can cook any kind of like eggs and omelets and things like that on the other side. I used to have one that I purchased separately and I would use that on the stove. I don't use that anymore because our new stove has it built in, but that's one of those summer accessories that I would probably put away going into the winter because I don't mind turning on the big oven to broil or bake. Like I said, it helps keep the place up. Okay, that's the appliances piece. Oh, so that makes sense, right? I mean, you probably don't even think about that, and I know that I'm a bit obsessive when it comes to the whole one thing on the counter, blah, blah, blah. That's just who I am, sorry. I just try to keep it minimal and clean and organized to the best of my ability, and that's what works for me. Okay, let's get into this bonus. So the bonus item is your summer items. That is your picnic blanket, your cooler, your beach towels. These are the things that you wanna take out and put away because I am so sorry to say, but that season is over. And so as we move into fall, those are things that you can store and then make sure that you have space for other things. Thank you so much for being here. We could have been anywhere on YouTube, but you chose to be with me and I appreciate that. I am so thankful for you. We will chat soon next Thursday to be exact.